Hi everyone, and welcome to our class on ostomies and hernias. My name is Siobhan, and I lead Better House Ostomy Education Program. So today I'll explain why hernias are such a common problem for people with ostomies. I'll also talk a little bit about the treatment options and what you can do to get the best result if you are trying to manage your own hernia. I'll also deep dive a little bit into uh, the risks and complications, uh, the things that might make your hernia uh, worse or better for you, and other ways to find, uh, and ways to find the most successful pouching system uh, to work with your hernia. I'd like to take a quick moment to introduce who we are. We are Better Health, and we are a new kind of medical provider. We take a holistic view of a patient's um, healthcare journey. And so what that means is not only do we provide these ostomy classes, and we, do we, we also offer one-on-one -on -one ostomy coaching, which is an exclusive member benefit, but we also have a team of product experts who can direct you into finding um, the best products that will uh, allow you to have the most successful experience possible. A little bit about me, as I said, my name is Siobhan and I have an ileostomy that I've had for six years. So we share a lot of the same experiences around leaks and products not working and um, other surprises that, that come with life with an ostomy. Now let's talk about what is a hernia. Well, a hernia is um, basically when you have some tissue that is sticking through the muscle wall. It's a very simple um, app, uh, explanation. Often there are different types of hernias. There can be a groin hernia, umbilical hernias, incisional hernias, or hiatal hernias. And the type of hernia that you would have if you have an ostomy is called an incisional hernia. And you may be wondering, how do you get a hernia? Well, a hernia comes from when the surgeon creates that incision in your abdomen and he allows or she allows that, that stoma to stick through. Now, when you make an incision in the muscle wall, it will never knit back together quite as well as if it had never been cut in the first place. So that, that um, incisional line may allow those uh, muscles to be a little bit weak there. And over time, they can start to spread apart a little bit, which allows your internal organs to come out from the inside. And uh, you really don't want that. Your internal organs should be protected behind that abdominal muscle wall. Now, specifically, we said you have an incisional hernia. And if you have an ostomy, it's called a peristomal hernia because that hernia will um, happen around the area where your stoma is located. As you can imagine, over time, as you're bending and straightening, recovering from surgery, um, or you're passing food through your hernia, there's a lot of stress that's placed on that incision, which can allow it again to kind of begin to separate over time. So that means that oftentimes you might know you have a hernia because it's a gradual process and uh, those internal tissues might begin to uh, poke out a little bit and then a little bit more and then a little bit more over that. It can be very difficult to have a ostomy barrier attached around this, the peristomal hernia because, well, the way that I like to explain it is that if you've ever had a cut on your knuckle and you've tried to put a Band-Aid around that knuckle, you know, if you wrap it around the knuckle, it's gonna, and you straighten up and you bend the knuckle, that Band-Aid's gonna loosen up a lot. So it's sort of the same idea with a, an ostomy barrier. There's gonna be a lot of flexion that is going to cause that ostomy barrier to kind of pull away from the bulge. But the good news is in a little while, I'll talk about some very specific products that will, um, specific ostomy barriers that will help you solve that problem. So the first thing um, is very important health information to know is that um, there are some risks and complications associated with hernia. So a risk is something that might cause you to develop a hernia. So you are at added risk of developing a hernia if you have one of the following conditions. For example, if you've experienced malnutrition as a result of say irritable bowel syndrome or having cancer, uh, which are both major causes of people needing ostomies, then your abdominal muscles are going to be weak because they're malnourished and they may not knit back together as well as you would hope they would. Um, in the same way, these other factors can cause muscles to be less resilient and to have trouble healing well after surgery. Now, a complication is different from a risk. A complication is an unanticipated result 
after surgery that affects your ability to heal or recover. So medical professionals like to you throw around terms like unfavorable prognosis, but in simpler terms, it means it's more like you have problem A, which is your cancer or your irritable bowel disease or your trauma, and you have problem B, which is the need for your ostomy surgery, and they add up to problem C, which is a bigger problem um, altogether than those, those problems A and B, um, which in problem C, to be specific, is, is an extended post-surgical recovery. And then, of course, complication is problem D, developing a hernia. The good news is that your medical provider will go over your risks and your complication, uh, your potential risks and complications before surgery. So you'll have some opportunity to know what to expect if you um, have some of the following, if you fall into some of the following categories, and also what you can do to mitigate um, the risk of complications. If you have a peristomal hernia, you have some treatment options available to you, and it's up to your medical provider, your surgeon, the person who's treating you for the hernia, um, and yourself to decide what is the best option for you. The most simple treatment, but maybe not the easiest all the time, are lifestyle changes. So in many cases, their treat per peristomal hernias are treatable with things like losing weight or quitting smoking. Another option is to integrate the use of a uh, abdominal support belt, and there are several different options that I'll describe to you in a little, in a little bit um, that will help ease your symptoms. Now, as we get more complicated in terms of treatment issues, if one of them is one of the first ones is closing the stoma. So this is an option that is only available for a small group of people. Oftentimes, if you have an ostomy, it is a permanent condition, although there is a group of people who might only have an ostomy for a short time and then they have what's called a takedown surgery. Now, you will clearly, if you have no bowel left, if it's been removed by surgery, um, there is really not an option for you to close your stoma. It, you have to have it in order to survive. You can repair the hernia. So what that means is that the surgeon may open up the abdominal wall and go in there and sews over the muscle and kind of reconnects things um, more strongly and reinforces that um, original surgery. Um, so this surgery is the most successful when the hernia is small. Relocating the stoma is another option. In some cases, a stoma with a peristomal hernia can be closed and a new stoma can be opened on a different part of the abdomen away from the original surgery site. It is possible though with the new surgery, if you have relocated the stoma, that you might still develop a peristomal hernia. Finally, we come to a mesh insert is a treatment option. Now, a mesh insert is what it sounds like. It's a, it's a piece of mesh, if you imagine, like the mesh on your window screen, but smaller and made appropriate for um, surgical implantation. And a mesh insert is um, it's a way for the muscles to uh, grow to and attach to so that they become stronger. It's, it's kind of like a scaffolding, if you will. And they can be either synthetic or a biological, uh, depends on what your surgeon chooses to use. But they do have um, a certain level of, of success in helping those muscles grow stronger and, um, and prevent those hernias from forming. Let's talk about how to manage that peristomal hernia. So lifting restrictions. These are some things, these are some actions to know about so that you can make sure that you're not making your uh, hernia worse. The first and probably the most important is lifting restrictions. If you can imagine, if you're lifting over and you're bending up, um, you are, you're placing stress on that abdominal wall. So follow your doctor's guidance, whatever that may mean. Sometimes your doctor may place some very light restrictions um, lifting restrictions on you, so you know, no more than five pounds. Sometimes it'll allow like a little bit more freedom for lifting, but usually it's no more than 10 pounds. Now, another option is ostomy belts. Um, ostomy belts come in a couple of different varieties. So, what I have here pictured is an ostomy belt, and typically, an ostomy belt specifically refers to this um, strip of elastic band that attaches to either your ostomy barrier or your ostomy bag. And it really kind of helps hold the whole appliance in place and um, helps hold that muscle wall in place. Now, these are covered by insurance. Um, and so when you're ordering, you wanna make sure that whatever ostomy belt 
you order uh, can match up to and hook into the ostomy system that you're currently using. So they're not really interchangeable among different manufacturers, like you couldn't wear a a coloplast belt with a uh, Hollister system. However, a lot of times with these ostomy belts, they can be a little uncomfortable. And I've worn one myself and I can definitely attest that um, sometimes they're, they're supportive, but they're not the most Mm, they're not the most comfortable thing to have digging into your skin all day. If that's the case, you can also um, use hernia belt. So a hernia belt is a fabric uh, wrap that goes around your waist. It may have an opening uh, for your ostomy pouch to stick through, like you see here in these pictures, or it may be um, it may have a pouch for the um, ostomy pouch itself to hide in, and you'd have to take it out and, and drain it if you use a drainable system. Now you see by the photos on the screen that the ostomy belts, uh, sorry, the hernia belts can be actually very, very wide, very supportive like a garter, or they can be more narrow like a traditional belt. Um, They may be covered by insurance. Some um, supply companies like like we do stock, it's sort of a a common, very common, very popular brands that you can request and that are covered by insurance. But if you need something that's very unique or you have special requests, those sort of custom designed ostomy um, hernia belts would probably be paid for out of pocket. Now, there are some clothing options that can also help you manage your ostomy. Ostomy wraps are a little bit different from hernia belts. Hernia belts are specifically meant to manage a hernia. Ostomy wraps are sort of more of a generic um, support for anybody who has an ostomy. Um, And I wear ostomy wraps a ton. I also use um, ostomy underwear, which is very helpful. It has a pocket to help support that pouch because it's not just the the stoma and the hernia that we want to support. That pouch gets full and it gets heavy and it's, it's kind of pulling on your stomach which is not a really, uh, real, real comfortable feeling. Um, you can also just choose to buy an off-the-shelf girdle, or um, now there's a pregnancy band, which is basically a large strip of nylon that you kind of shimmy into. Um, you can find it on Amazon or other online retailer stores, um, and they help support the belly and the ostomy bag. And then of course, clothing like spandex, bike shorts. Um, For women, we have sort of an infinite choice of leggings. Uh, High-waisted leggings have been um, the most amazing invention. And I'm so glad that they're popular, uh, especially now because they make my life really easy and they're very supportive. Um, And you may choose to have some combination of all of these garments, you know, an ostomy belt plus some high-waisted leggings or, you know, a a hernia belt and just a regular, you know, if you're wearing jeans, just a regular belt on top of that. It's really up to you. And it's, um, I I encourage you to personalize your own system. Now, ostomy barriers, as I described earlier with my little knuckle demonstration, it can be really challenging to get that ostomy barrier to stick around the stoma. So especially if you want to avoid putting pressure on that peristomal area, you know, one of the things that you want to do is is protect it, right? So you want to stay away from those contact sports and you want to avoid putting pressure, especially if you're applying your barrier around. So if that is the case, if you're trying to avoid putting pressure on your peristomal um, area to avoid aggravating that hernia, The thing that you might wanna try is a one-piece system. A one-piece system is where the ostomy barrier and the ostomy bag are connected together into one unit. They come as one unit. So if you put one on and you you wanna change the bag, you have to take the whole thing off. Um, Versus a two-piece system. And a two-piece system is when the barrier and the bag come separately and then they connect together via a mechanical or adhesive mechanism. Now, The one-piece systems are more flexible than the two-piece systems because they are, um, they don't have that structure that's built in that allows the two-piece system to connect together. So if you imagine there's kind of like a Tupperware snap together lid in a two-piece system that isn't uh, present in that one-piece system. I encourage you to experiment with different barriers across the different um, ostomy manufacturer Uh, manufacturer systems. And the reason I say that is because each manufacturer makes a set of ostomy barriers, but they vary very much in terms of flexibility, overall flexibility. Some of them are very stiff. 
Some of them are, are very, very um, malleable and flexible, and it, it really can depend on what your personal needs are, um, what you'll be happy with. So, you know, definitely ask for samples at Better Health. We provide samples with your first order once you become a member. So you have the opportunity to try different things and, and find the product that works best for you. And then additionally, barrier extender strips um, can help secure those barrier edges. So sometimes that barrier doesn't wanna lay quite flat um, uh, around the bulge of the skin. So one of my suggestions is to order barrier health, ex um, barrier extender strips. You can order these from your medical supply provider like Better Health. And um, they just go around the external, sorry, the, the, the outside edge of your barrier and they, they just extend the working area. I'd like to introduce you to a particular product that is actually very spe spe specifically designed to fit around a peristomal bur um, bulge. And what that is, is um, it's, it's by Coloplast and it's called the Sincera Mio Convex Slip. Um, and the convex flip is just marketing way of saying the concave. This is actually a concave shape. The way that this works is that it fits around the bulge in a way that um, oval or round or even square barriers uh, really can't manage because it has these star shapes. And um, the star shapes, the petals, kind of conform around and leave space. You know, they, they don't try and force the barrier to fit a shape that it's not meant to fit. We've reached the end of the class, so I have some key conclusions and takeaways for you. Now, the reason I always put these at the end of the slides is I know that I spend a lot of time in these classes uh, giving tons of information, which is useful, but maybe hard to remember, especially if you're new to it and uh, you're just trying to, to capture all of the things that you need to know about life with an ostomy. First, protect your, your hernia. That is the most key um, and important thing to know. You want to make sure that you're not making it worse by following doctor's guidance, wearing supportive garments, um, and you know not lifting things that are too heavy. You also want to make sure that you experiment and find the right barrier. So as I mentioned, some barriers are more flexible, some are more structured. So it's, it's worth it to take the time to um, practice with some different barriers. And I know as an ostomate myself that it can be a little bit scary to um, to try a new barrier because you're not sure if it's going to work or if it's going to make a big mess if it leaks. So, um, you know, if you have a half an hour or some time, you can try it at home, sit with it. And if you don't think it's working, you can take it off before things go um, get out of control. Finally, see your doctor if you suspect that you have a hernia or that a hernia is developing. I would encourage you not to try to self-diagnose, and I, of course, can't diagnose for you. I'm not a medical provider, but your doctor will be able to establish that you have a hernia and to make sure that if you need support garments for that, your insurance, um, it, your prescription is updated in your files so that your medical supply company uh, can get you those products that you need. If you'd like to become a member of Better Health, uh, we would love to ha have you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us at the number below or at the website that you see, joinbetter.com. Thank you so much for coming to today's class on hernias and ostomies. I hope to see you in the next class.